First one for you, Mike. Senator, uh, in this undeclared war against ISIS, where do you stand in terms of declaring war or formalizing the fight that we are having with so many tribes in the Middle East? Uh, Mike, we have to do it. Today's the 10th month anniversary of the, uh, of the war against ISIL. It started on August 8th, about $2.5 billion, 3,500 bombing runs. We've lost American troops in this operation. Our hostages have been beheaded. Uh, it's absolutely shameful that Congress hasn't done an authorization for use of military force. I introduced one in September that got a vote in the Foreign Relations Committee in December, but it then died on the floor. Uh, later today, because of the 10th month anniversary, Senator Flake from Arizona and I are going to reintroduce an authorization, trying to make it bipartisan so that Congress will finally do its job. What difference would it make? Well, he here's the difference it makes. Right now, if you're ISIL, you have no evidence, none, that Congress cares about you at all. If you're a, an ally of the United States, you have no evidence at all that Congress cares about the battle against ISIL, but especially if you're one of the 3,500 American troops who are deployed thousands of miles from their home in this theater of war, risking your lives every day, you have no evidence that Congress cares about this at all. It is constitutionally required for Congress to do this, and that's for a reason. We shouldn't be risking our troops' lives unless we're willing to have the debate shape the mission give the president authority and then our troops know that they have us behind them but if we're not willing to do that we shouldn't order them to risk their lives well, what would be the cause for war what would be the causes belli here what would what would be the cause that would uh, cause us to formally declare war and reoccupy for a period of time or reinvade for a period of time another middle eastern country well, ISIL, ISIL has declared war against us, and ISIL is killing Americans, and ISIL poses an immediate threat, but also a long-term threat to the security of the region. But, uh, but I want to pick up on your second point. I don't view this as one where we should be reoccupying. I think that would be a mistake. The region has to stand up against its own terrorist threat. And if they do, then we should be supporting them with bombing campaign, for example, such as we're doing today, and maybe some additional efforts that can and help them succeed. We can't police a region that won't police itself. But the ISIL does pose a threat to the United States. We've already lost lives in this mission and we'll lose more if we don't support a vigorous region.